Yeah, the peace sign. I'm out here for some of that. You know, it's a little bit of an odd feeling. It's 1245 right now on this Tuesday. And uh, the past 29 years, well, this will be year 29, for the past 28 years, I've been at the Minnesota State Fair, and I would be on stage right now, coming into the final 10 minutes of the show, bringing it on home, trying to get the people I ain't got yet, and keeping the people I done got interested in me. What do I miss about the Minnesota State Fair? Doing this, and then seeing this. Mom, how does he do that? Good program, good. Yet here I am, up on the Kekakopic Trail right now, walking through the Boundary Waters Canoe Wilderness area, all by myself. Kind of a weird thing. Still wrapping my head around this retirement and uh, you know all the stuff that got canceled. I don't think about it. I'm gonna ponder it on the walk here. That's what I'm gonna do. I will be pondering and pontificating as I parade down this promenade here in the backwoods hood. My spirit animal has found me. Well, I'm taking myself a little stop down here at Bakuzin Lake. Watering up, having a cup of cold medaglia d'oro instant espresso, having a little lunch. Quite windy. Yeah, looks like it might rain, you know, 10% chance. But I, you know, it's been a while since I've stayed in this camp. Last time I was here, I was on this trail. I was doing the snowbank, went the wrong way, kind of twisted my knee. It was my pre um, knee surgery. Well, I think it was the time that I busted my meniscus and tore it that led to surgery about six, seven years ago. No, well, it survived the storm pretty well. Just a, just a little bit more grown up. Still got one of those sweet U.S. Forest Service fire pits. Uh, here's my lunch sprawl. Yeah, all right. Sizable. This little stretch of woods, kind of an ominous feel to it. You ever been walking alone? Feel like something's following you? Like maybe a booger or a hank? A boo Radley? Some kind of wood nymph? I had that feeling for about 20 minutes. Maybe I'm the guy following something. Maybe there's somebody up ahead of me having that same feeling, and I'm the guy following. <laughs> Bog.
There's two campsites pretty close here now on Benizi. The one back that way, I didn't film it. I went in there years ago and it was kind of of a decrepit camp. I remember kind of, you know, bushwhacking my way back there and the fire pit was all, you know, grown in and there were bear scratches all over the trees. But man, it's a beautiful camp now. Really only good for maybe one or two hammocks. And this one, got this real pretty little area to come down to get water. And uh, where you would camp is on up in the woods up that way. Got some nice uh, tent pads and look like you could get a couple of hammocks in there. But sort of funny. Uh, this is not at all the camp I remember. Not in any way, shape, or form. So, you know, if you haven't been somewhere in a good while, it, you know, the woods reshape themselves all the time. And I'm always amazed. That's why I never mind going back to places sometimes over and over, you know, with a few years in between or even a year or, you know, a few months because you go back and uh, things have changed. And that storm changed a lot of stuff. But I like this site. I'm getting on about seven miles now and maybe three more to where I'm thinking of going. I got a couple of options there. I'm thinking about getting up to Disappointment Lake and it's about 3.30. And, uh, kind of thought about staying here but I think I ought to just uh just boogie on just boogie on I'm gonna sit here and think about that for a minute day one I'm back on the Kekakabic heading east and I'm uh, gonna grab the disappointment loop got a little ways to go uh, kind of a moody day out here got overcast really windy and the Kekakabic other than being a little overgrown uh, the blowdown and I mean, even that stuff from that storm a few years back, I cannot believe how much they sawed through here. And I know I've come through it before, but it's always a reminder of just like, wow, man. That wind came from the north and just blew trees down like crazy. But it's in good shape. Not too many deadfalls, you know, uh, slowing down the pace. So, boom, yeah, woo, buddy. Good to be out here. I'm getting tired and I am ready because I was up early. Early! Um, I am ready to get up there, eat my leftover ravioli from last night's dinner, get my hammock pitched up, my El Dorado, my DIY black crow tarp, crawl in, go to sleep, sleep tonight, get up tomorrow, head for Asab Lake. Now I'm on the disappointment trail heading north. Came off the Kekakabic. My good old ULA circuit got me out here. And I got myself a glorious camp. Pretty windy. Won't be any bugs. Maybe I can tuck up back in there. I am not disappointed on Disappointment Lake. Woo, it's windy. Get a little interesting uh, rig. Use my little, my little tabs. Kind of run me some, run me some line like that. Help keep this thing from blowing in. And because the wind is coming toward me this way, but this is the way I wanted to lay so I could see the lake. Rig my rain jacket in there, just in case it rains tonight, a little bit, which it might. And if it's windy, that'll keep a little bit of the wind off of me. And I did even bring my under quilt protector. <sighs> Good and comfortable and uh, just kind of had a little bit of a sprinkle. But there's some sun out there on the lake. And the rain is kind of kind of coming this way and then sort of blowing back this way, the wind. I feel good. That was a good walk. About 10 miles today and uh, really uh happy to find this site I've never walked in on this site and I've come up and down this trail a couple of times in my life so I want to get up to Lake Asab where me and Hickory camped and it's sort of on the other side of disappointment little lake but now that I'm all set up and I got my water I'm gonna fix myself a little din din bon appetito and I am going to have myself some ravioli and I enjoyed it so much last night I saved half my uh, half my plate so I brought that out here all secure in sector 7 woo buddy happy to be out here man
Orange Man. Orange Man laying in Shook's tarp. Orange Man. Oh, that's stunning. You know, it's not the bright red, but you'd have to be here live with this wind and uh, water chopping. I was just sitting, fixing my dinner, and a, a mouse crawled up my leg. I have to wage war tonight. Oh, I just about forgot to show you my good old ravioli here. I laid me some rocks in my pot, put a little bit of water, steamed it up, and man, it's good. And those uh, those mice are running around here real excited. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Goodness gracious, that's good eating. Uh, tonight's dessert, the Wonder Bar from Canada. That's a peanut butter caramel experience. Dul caramel archi archids. Pardon my French. One door bar. What kind of a freak thunderstorm last night? I reckon I crawled into the hammock. It was darkish, so I'd say nine ish, eight thirty nine. Slept ten hours and uh just kind of <laughs> saw a flash and then wow. <laughs> and it uh kind of went on for a little while, blew away, and uh and then rained pretty hard. And it stayed high and dry. I had to get out and just take this tarp pole down right there. And uh, I was really glad I hung my rain jacket up because it was definitely blowing this way. But it kept it right off of me and all was good. And I fell into a deep, deep slumber. Now I'm just sitting here waiting to fix my Medaglia d'Oro Instant Espresso. It's about 52 degrees. Still got that wind. So it's... Uh, it's a mad chill, mad chill. But I'm just gonna lay around and enjoy my breakfast, warm up, go have a morning constitutional, and then head on up to Hub Lake, and that's what I'm gonna do right there. This morning's breakfast fair, the West Memphis, not East Memphis, West Memphis. One of my favorites, grit souffle. Oh, glory. Finally, my Medaglia d'Oro Instant Espresso is done. As I sit here and feast in this morning backwoods breakfast buffet on a chocolate peanut butter pap tart. A chocolate peanut butter pap tart. Mm. I shouldn't have hollered that loud. I'm not awake enough yet. Well, I checked the weather forecast on my inReach and it's supposed to be a gentle breeze. I don't think this is beyond gentle. I think this is rowdy and rugged breeze. Maybe it'll die. And it's supposed to get some heavy rain tonight in this cool weather, so. Mm, I think I gotta hike out in some rain, but it's always interesting in cool weather. Get to camp, gotta get all warm. Adds a little excitement. Pretty interesting, it's September 3rd, up here in the Boundary Waters, canoe wilderness area, but I don't have a canoe, I'm just going to call it the Boundary Waters Wilderness Area, I don't know, yesterday and today, no bugs, man, I mean, I zipped my bug net up to sleep last night, that was mainly just to keep a lot of that wind off of me, and uh, my underquilt protector did a really good job, in fact, it was so windy, it was kind of blowing it out from underneath me and out this way. And I took my two little cinch ties here and tied it up over the top of my bug net there for uh, when I went into my deep REM sleep. Just to keep it on me because uh, 
You know me, I like to use my DIY Black Crow tarp, which has got an 11-foot ridge line, and it's basically three feet on each side, so about six feet across, just a little bit, little bit longer than that. And I like that personally because I like to see the woods. It covers me from the rain. Now, so I carry my underquilt protector, which I think is about five and a half ounces. It's just a I think it's just a ripstop nylon. For me, the main reason is to block the wind. Um, because when you got an underquilt and the wind is blowing really hard through your tarp, and this is part of the tarp life, it will take some of the heat out of there. It's just like standing out on the cold rock. You know, you're, if you don't have the wind on you, you feel warmer. The minute you get out in a cold wind, uh, you feel colder. So it really just protects that and uh, snugs you up. I don't know. I just like this tarp. I like to see if I can get by. I always have. It's just an option. It's just choices, you know. There's some people that love to bring a big tarp every time. Um, but when I got that big tarp pitched, I, I'm seeing more tarp and less woods. And I like to see the woods. So, uh, there, that's just me. That's my thought. That's what I like to do. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Kind of the great thing about the tarp life, but if you were going to live under a tarp out in the woods, you got to, you know, you got to know that once in a while, you're going to have a little emergency situation. Pardon me while well, I have a sip of my Medaglia d'Oro Instant Espresso. I like to slurp my Medaglia d'Oro when I'm hanging out here in the woods. Hey, there's the red squirrel. Hey, buddy. Hey, come on over. What are you doing? And he's right here. What are you doing? Come over for a little morning visit. Looking to get my pop tarts, are you? You think there's some food or something over here that you want? You look jumpy, buddy. I did throw a peanut or two out there last night. All right, let's get back to my talk. Woke up at about 5.30, just a, and there's a big full moon out, man. Big full moon last night. And the sun was starting to come up that way out in the east. Still that big full moon out there in the west. Now it was beautiful, got to take a pee. Crawled back in, pulled my hat down over my eyes. Went to sleep, heard some loons, heard the wind, heard a bird flap by, big bird. And I was just laying here and go, I got about 10 hours of sleep. So I slumbered back down. I think I slept till I got up to go grab my food bag at about 7.15. Hey guys, let me tell y'all something. Whenever you get 10 hours of sleep, that is like a gift. At home, like I always tell you, five six hours maybe seven sometimes four and a half sometimes I don't know why um, could just be pondering my new retirement or whatever but you know when you're at home things are on your mind you get older you don't sleep as much but God, my wife is so jealous you know Meg is just like do you really get 10 or 12 hours of sleep I'm going I do I was really getting a ride in this hammock last night <clears throat> with that wind blowing and those trees were moving, and it was, I was getting a, I, I love it, you know, it's kind of fun. It's like kind of going up and down and side to side a little bit, and then the wind would die, and then come in, and the tarp going. But with the seal nylon, it's not really loud. Kind of enjoyed it. Well, I'm rambling north up on the uh, Disappointment Trail now. And, uh, you know, it's got some old logs across it, a little bit of blowdown, nothing critical. It's pretty, uh, pretty overgrown in a lot of places, but nothing bad. Uh, I don't have 
real far to go compared to yesterday. So that'll be nice. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what shape this campsite's in. Disappointment Lake. Windy. I'd hate to be paddling today, man. Unless you had the wind at your back. White caps out there. Woo, buddy. Now I'm here at Camp Asub. It's a sweet little lake, but the site it just got decimated in that storm. I haven't been here since, and just there used to be good hanging trees all over down in here, and you could get down to the water. Now it's just it's just deadfall. And then the lake is on down that way. There's a little trail to the water that zings, zings, zings down through the water. Yeah, it's just all this deadfall. I remember hanging down in there. Yep. Well, I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to go on to uh, see if Disappointment Camp is open. It's a little more out of the wind here, but I'm, I'm too sad to stay. It's just... Uh... Mm -mm. hate to see that, you know. I have great memories of this camp. Checking out my food? Yeah, that's what you want. It's a peanut. Oh, yeah. Alright. Well, look what somebody left here at this site. They left a perfectly good old handleless pot. Wow. And I got my camp pitch right back up in there. And I'm looking out this way. Had a couple of canoers just come up here. A man, a woman, and a dog. A dog that did not like me. Like some cockadoodle. What do you call them? Cockapoo? Doodle, cockadoodle. It was a big poodle, like a big standard poodle. He was bowed up at me. And they came into camp. I saw them coming and pulled in. And they thought the portage was right over there. Because, you know, from the lake you can mistake it as a portage. Now see, if you're out in the lake, and they were way, the canoers come from way up in this area, and I saw them coming down, and if you look, it looks like it'd be a portage, but really, just ends up back in here, kind of a little campsite. And if you go on over this way, there's the fire pit, and chipmunk central so I was able to help those folks out and they were going well could we go back up the trail we know the portage crosses the trail and I said man you do not want to take this little trail out of camp and then take the little trail into Asub Lake with the canoes I said I think the portage is just a little further north and you'll be happy you did and they thank you very much sir they called me sir I think they were my age <laughs> it's kind of funny I uh, heard a mumbling down here. I think the husband was going, well, we could camp right here, maybe if I ask this guy. And she's going, I don't want to camp with that guy. I don't want to camp with that guy at all. I don't like men by themselves. Backpackers make me nervous. They stink. They never have any good food. We've got meat. She didn't really say that. Anyway, they took off and went on around. And I said, man, good for you for canoeing out in this wind. Couldn't be easy. So I got to this camp a little early. Early! And uh, the way this trip is panning out... It just seems better to stay here because, you know, Asab was a heartbreaker. And uh, I came on down here to disappointment. I have camped in this site before because it was either... If I go on north, I'm going to kind of end up looping through where I was, I don't know, three weeks ago or something. And uh, I just don't want to do that again. I mean, when I want to come up and do a proper loop, I will. So... And I didn't want to backtrack back down to like Wooden Leg Lake or back down to... Uh, Benizi Lake. Tonight I'm going to have the Packet Gourmet Texas State Fair Chili in honor of the Minnesota State Fair, which would be going on right now. <laughs> Got canceled. So it uh, always feels weird. It feels weird down in my soul to be out in the woods when I feel like I should be up on stage. I'd, I'd be announcing the parade right now. But that's what was and this is what is. Hey. I'm trying to get into my peanuts. I see you're digging in there. Boy, you dug into that bag while I was gone. I ripped a little hole in there. Mop. Mop. 
to stash those away a little better. Man, I might go hang those up. I wanna did you get you one? See if you can get your an M&M out of there. Oh, you got your one, didn't you? You got an M&M! Van Halen would be happy to see that guy running off with a green M&M. All right, I'm gonna stash these up. Well, that's why you bring duct tape to patch up your peanut and M&M bag. I like to eat those while I'm walking. hung my bag up with my peanuts right there. I don't want to meet my peanuts in my M&M's. So I'm kind of sitting here thinking about pack weight and I get asked this about every trip, people want to know what my pack weighs. And honestly, I, I barely, rarely, hardly ever, really never weigh my pack anymore. Because um, it comes down to a few things. You know, how many days the trip is, what the weather's going to be, so what kind of clothing system I'm going to carry, how many days of food, and my alcohol fuel. Sort of a two and a half ounce to two ounce a day with the alcohol it just depends if I want to have a little extra cocoa or an extra coffee on the trail but found most of the time in you know mild weather I if I have an afternoon coffee like yesterday I just have it cold man I just put the medallia d'oro in there so I know that my pack from what I've weighed for my own mainly everything but my food fuel and the water I carry will be between 12 to 16 pounds thereabouts and that's hammock under quilt top quilt uh, my clothes I do not like to sleep in the clothes I hike in because I'm sweaty and I'm always wet at the end of the day no matter what the weather so I don't weigh the pack because what if I weighed it and I thought it was too heavy I might take a few things out but I'm going on the trip one way or the other so I don't even like to know and uh on this trip, you know, usually when I'm walking, I got this bottle right here. This is a like a small Powerade bottle. And then I carry, um, it's like a Gatorade or Powerade bottle right here. And I carry these when I start off in the morning, both full, unless I know I'm going to have water all the way in the day. But I just like to have it on me. And, you know, water, water adds some weight to your pack. You know, your pack always, no matter how you do it, it always feels heavy until you get it on your back. And, boy, then it feels good. So, I just don't really weigh it anymore. I don't really care. I kind of know what my load is about every time. So, that's that. Uh, so, my base weight, 12 to 16, right in there. And, of course, as the weather gets cooler, that goes up. Hot weather, a little bit lighter because I'm carrying less insulation. And one thing I forgot to add on that whole pack weight soliloquy I just did was, uh, you know, I'm 62 now. Things change when you get in your 60s. The hiking is a little slower. Uh, man, some days you feel like you have it, some days you feel like you don't. So, through all my pack experimentation, through all the years I've been backpacking, from being a Boy Scout in the 6th grade on, I've come down to where I have what I call an old man comfortable load. I got all the stuff I need on my back, and as long as I can get it on my back and walk, that's what I'm going with, but I don't want to be cold. I don't want to be hungry. I want to be comfortable. I want to make sure I got a first aid kit with me, and I always carry stuff. Just, you know, cut my finger today. Digging up a stick. Just kind of rip my finger. And uh, have something to bandage yourself up with, and, and uh, be prepared, as the Boy Scouts say. Oh, and just one more little addendum to that whole uh, soliloquy times two I was talking about. If you sit down and talk to a group of backpackers, you know, you got your people that weigh every ounce and gram and want to go with the bare minimum stuff, and I, I salute you. That's the way you should go. I know people that bring way more stuff. You know, I've got a different pair of denims for every day. Good for you. If, if that gets you out there, well, I heard alone, and you're comfortable with it, that's the way you should backpack. So, 
you know, it's like everything we do in life. We all can't do it the same. So, man, I love standing here, here in Loons. Whatever gets you out on the trail, just get it together and get out there and go. You can always adjust. You'll always find yourself changing through your lifetime of going from heavy to getting ultralight and then going back in with some comfort things and maybe going back ultralight and maybe giving up backpacking altogether because it's a lot of work. <laughs> my girl, talking about my girl. Ooh. My girl's at home, probably working. She's my sugar lady, or woman, or woman of a specific gender. So don't ever let anybody tell you that you're backpacking wrong. As long as you're backpacking, you're doing it right. You can always tweak, always make adjustments. Don't forget that, because there are people out there that love to tell you that you're not doing it right. And if you ask people questions and say, I would like to lighten my load, that sounded kind of dirty. I would like to get my load lighter. Um, Shoot, they'll help you. I've done it with people. Or I've had people with the tiniest little pack, but I'm sitting there having a candy bar and they're staring at me going, uh, hey dude, uh, can I lick your wrapper if you're done with that? So, hike your own hike, pack your own pack, do it your own way. If you're out there, then you were backpacking. You're doing it right. Well, I guess that tie line didn't work out too good. Looks like they had to cut the ends and their rock is all wrapped around the limb up there. Hey, Hickory, some twine for you to get. I laugh at Hickory because he cannot leave a piece of twine behind, man. He's got like a spool of twine at home through all the years we've camped. He'd be shimmying up that tree, figuring out some way to get it. It would bother him all day if he didn't get it. He'd leave camp with some tight lips. You know you would, man. You know you would. Oh, this doesn't bode well. This is uh, tomorrow morning about 4 a.m. Wind gusts 35. Heavy rain still. Whoa. Gonna have a good dinner tonight. Texas State Fair chili. Got your ranch chili with beef, red beans, smoked peppers topped with corn chips, cheese, and Texas Pete hot sauce. Plus, I brought myself some HP sauce. Got myself some extra cheese and onions. Hope they're not tainted. And extra Fritos. Woo, buddy! Oh, packet gourmet Texas State Fair chili. Whoa, don't steam me up. Goodness gracious, that's good eating. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. That is a hearty meal. I've been waiting and waiting. It's getting to be about 7 o'clock now. The wind has died. It's really still. <laughs> Man, I hope it's not heavy rain and, uh, you know, 35 mile an hour wind gusts tonight. Whoa, it is blowing out there. So I crawled in about 9 o'clock last night. I actually laid here in red for about a half hour before I drifted off. And I swear, about 11.30, I had fallen asleep and I started seeing some flashes of lightning again. Like they were pow, pow, pow. And then it thundered. And usually when you hear thunder, you like hear it from one area. This was kind of a thunder that just sort of rumbled and traveled across the sky over my head. And then it just opened up with rain, man. I mean, it poured. And then I woke up about one by the wind. And it's been blowing all night. And it was supposed to have gust to 35, and I swear it is. I mean, the lake is just like white caps. 
sound like a freight train a few times, but I've got a really good spot where I have my hammock, and I'm kind of protected by it, but I had pitched my tarp down extra tight last night and tucked the corners in and really secured everything, but I don't know about that, kid. I don't know about that. But I'm just going to enjoy my second, my Dagliadoro Instant Espresso, really get myself awake. Do I have a focused walk today and not slip all over the slippery rocks? Well, that's what's going on here. Just thinking about that. Thinking about how I'm going to pack if it's a wet day. Where I want my little lunch things. What I'm going to need. What's I don't want to have to need something that's back in the pack and drop pack. And That's it. Nothing deep. You know that world? I'm not really thinking about it too much right now. I'm just... Uh, Enjoying here in the forest. That's what I'm doing. Got these really pretty rocks I'm looking at here behind me too. They look real nice. Well, it's 9:14. I'm packed. The wind has died a little bit, and that's good. Really glad to not have to pack up in the rain. Just some light sprinkling. Just did it all up under my tarp and couldn't find my spoon this morning. I had my spoon. I think I had it laying on the ground or stuck in my cook kit. And I, I think one of the critters ran off with it. I looked everywhere. I've scanned the area. Spoonless. You know, it's all this deadfall from that storm a few years ago. Get you, get you kind of thinking out here in these high winds. I mean, it was like a freight train last night cutting across the lake. Woke me up a couple times just uh, Like I said, I had, I was, had my tarp and hammock pitched pretty much out of it, but it is, it is blowing. It's these gusts. It'll just be blowing all of a sudden. And you know, it's happened up here before, so you got to be aware that it could happen again. You know, one thing I do is, uh, like last night, before I crawled in and went to sleep, uh, I had secured my perimeter, and I had two spots that I, I mean, if trees started falling, I had my pack ready, rain gear ready. I was ready to go grab that, get out of there, and right out on the, on the south end of the point where I was, there's a big open rock. And what you're looking out for is what got people a few years ago when the trees started falling, several people got killed by them, is get away from them. And also where I pitched my hammock, I was really particular to look up and uh, it felt like the safest place to be. There was one giant tree pretty far away from me, but it was leaning the other way. But I kind of judge if something falls, will it get caught up? You know, just, just good to know. And, uh, camp in like the safest place you can feel and I did feel that last night so you know there's just precautions you got to take and uh, so I, I was ready if it happened get up grab my pack bam have my rain gear in it have my rain jacket right on top of it covering it and get to the safest place I thought I could be if one of those big straight line winds came and trees started falling you know maybe you got a fighting chance I felt like I did Well, the rain came. It's about 50 degrees. Now I'm on the Kekakabic. Uh I just passed where you catch the trail down to the two Benizia Lake campsites. And then that loop goes on down around that way to B Bakuzin Lake and back over. But I'm staying on the Kek because of all the trails out here, the snowbank, which I'll be getting on later going north and south, and the disappointment. They're rooty, rocky, rough. A uh, little ups and down hills, you know, nothing too critical. But the Keck is an old fire cut, and it is the easier walk of all those three. Less big bouldery rock sticking up in the trail, but... I'm boogieing onto the car. Oh, uh, well, that way I can get up tomorrow and watch uh, 
Formula One practice. So uh, it's a win, win, lose, win, win, lose. So there's what a lot of the CAC looks like. Right there. And it's been very crittery. I've had, uh, let's see, I've had mice. I've had a lot of good encounters with chipmunks and uh, had some good red squirrel encounters. No big animals, just seen four or five bear scat on the trail, all big. All look like they were a day or two old. Uh, no wolf sign, no moose sign, really. Uh, only two people I saw were about for the 10 minutes at the one camp, so worked out well. So I'm walking on in, it's like 50 degrees. My hands are cold, my feet are cold, my heart is warm. The sun is out now. It's kind of been raining hard, then it stopped. Some will peek out for about a minute and a half, go away, rain again. Some will come out, go away real quickly, rain hard. So it's been that kind of a morning, but right now, it's really cleared up. I'm on the final leg in, up to the trailhead. Walked about eight miles this morning. <laughs> Moments later, had to whip out the old GoPro. And it's coming down. Oh, glory. Glory, glory. Well, buddy, I'm back to the car. It was about 10 and a half miles out. That whole route was, uh, two nights was 22 miles. Man, I tell you, I got up here to the car at the trailhead and it was blowing like crazy. But the sun's out now, but it's real windy. So I hope everybody out there tonight is safe because it's supposed to be super windy, kind of cold tomorrow. Good luck to them. I'll be thinking about them. Well, off we go. Had a great time as usual. Talk to you later. Woo, buddy! All secure in Sector 7. Pow! Well, once again, I have stopped at Gordy's Hi-Hat. Third time this season. Ready for it. Oh, that's just your single right there, man. And those crispy fries. Look at that. Oh, oh man. I am so hungry. I haven't eaten anything. A little bit of my trail food. <laughs> Waiting for this. Oh! Mm. Mm. Let me take my serviette and dab the grease from the corners of my mouth. Whoa, buddy. Good. Ah. Goodness gracious, that's good eating. Gordy's high hat. This is my third Boundary Waters trip and my third time stopping at Gordy's. Well, hello everybody, it's Suge here. I just wanted to let you know, for those of you that were interested and had reached out to me, I have my Etsy shop open now, where I'm able to get my prints online of some of my paintings. And this is the Hammock Vermont Landscape. All of these are printed on a really nice archival paper. This is a Moab Bright. It's a really firm paper. That's about the biggest I can make them now, because then I can get them into a nice hard envelope, and they'll fit into that and I can get them to you, and you'll get a Shook sticker, and uh, throw that in there for you. So that's available. Uh, I also got, uh, and I got some like the Maple King, but I'm gonna put a link in the description box below this video. Now this is something I'm just trying out. I'm not sure what is, you know, gonna be the most popular or popular at all, so, what I'll do if if uh, if things do sell and a few of them sell out, keep in mind that I'll restock. It takes me a while to get in touch with the company that prints these on this good paper with the Gicle printing. And uh, probably takes me sometimes two and a half, three weeks to get them back in. But there will be a notice on the Etsy site. So if you're one of the folks that wanted to buy one, thank you for your support. I appreciate it. It's been uh, quite a journey to figure out how to do this and get them printed in a way that I feel good about them, uh, passing it on to you if that's something that you wanted to put in a frame or just thumbtack it or tape it on the wall in your gear room.